Good morning, and welcome to a special subscriber edition of StarCast from Planet Waves. I'm Eric Francis Coppolino, speaking to you fairly early on a Wednesday morning here in Kingston. I thought I would uh, get some kind of uh, perspective to you while the astrology is still fresh. Tomorrow's edition comes out Thursday night, and so... Um, we'll we'll be right in the middle of this when uh, when that happens. So I thought I would um, again get it to you in advance. So um, we're we're in this weird moment. <clears throat> if you haven't noticed, uh, things feel a little strange, and it's subtle. Uh, not everyone is noticing this, but I'm I'm noticing it in the form of tension, and in the form of the sensation of <clears throat> the the other. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is not warmed up. The other shoe about to drop. Uh, that, like, like, uh, you know, in the words of Radiohead, something big is gonna happen. So I'm not saying that it is, by the way. But what I'm saying is that there's this uh, feeling in the air, and it's also clear that socially, politically, spiritually. Uh, we are way in the deep end, and I don't think anyone has a uh, a a map or nautical chart of the territory, and um, that too is leading to a a sense of mystery. And as I've said many times, and will continue to say in as many creative ways as I possibly can, and ordinary ones too, uh, that we are experiencing a massive case of digititis inflammation of elements of the psyche that are reacting to being soaked in digital conditions which is not a natural condition for us it's a kind of a habitat uh, it is uh, it is strange to be here in this land without bodies and of instantaneous communication and the key to surviving and indeed having a good time in in this time is to keep your body and to do the things your body does and to relate to people physically. I'm not saying that the body is the be all end all of of existence, but it is the focal point of our consciousness now, without which anything we are doing uh, would would be possible. Um, and this is not the voluntary uh, letting go of of body awareness and and uh, reaching into a new level of or, or dimension of awareness. This is the violent ejection of the soul from the body by digital technology. And look, the stuff is seductive. It is the instantaneous involvement of digital that makes it so alluring and that also presents the, the greatest risk of of having our realities subtracted from physical reality. There's lots of ways to stay in touch with yourself, whether it's nature, whether it's music, whether it's your critters, whether it is growing mushrooms in the attic, whether it is uh, a love of water, or whatever it might be. So let's talk about the astrology. Um, but wait, I haven't given you the weather report. <laughs> um, uh, it, it has been a rather sunny summer here, and and, um, and and when the weather when that weather changes, it's always noteworthy, noticeable, and suddenly it's become kind of dark and rainy in the morning and. That is uh, that's an invitation inward, at least uh, at least for me. The weather, by the way, is a good way to stay in touch with your senses and your body's noticing 
the weather. All right, so um, here we are on this dark morning in Kingston, New York. And I wrote the weekly horoscope tomorrow. That comes out Thursday. And so I've got a sense of this chart. And the, and the way this chart is set up is basically a grand opposition. There are planets that are streaking through mostly, though there's quite a bit in Capricorn. The, 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 well, yeah, the concentration is on one side of the solar system, Capricorn through... Taurus, that's about 120 degrees, Earth to Earth. And then on the other side of the solar system, it goes Leo through Scorpio. So the concentration is in Leo, Virgo, Libra, and then Scorpio, counting out to Ceres, which is about to enter Scorpio. So th this is a big polarity set up. I mean, a big one, because there's not much that's not involved in this polarity. Vesta, for example, is... Uh, floating around and the stuff in early Capricorn, this grouping that I draw into every chart except the one you've got because I was lazy and I want to go downstairs and scan this chart. So, uh, but it's Quayar, Pholus, uh, Ixion, and Apollon all concentrated around Pholus and that's opposed by Vesta. So those are really the outliers in this, uh, in this planetary system and uh, Vesta is new in Cancer or about to be. It's a half a degree in on the 15th. So it's changing signs. Now, the thing is, there's a lot of asteroids changing signs. This is unusual to have Vesta, Ceres, and Pallas Athene all changing signs within a day of one another. That's really interesting. I've never noticed that happening. So, uh, so. So Vesta is entering Cancer, Pallas is entering Libra, or just did, and then Ceres is entering Scorpio. And the, this is like the color wheel changing rapidly, suddenly. The, um, all the planets can express a wide diversity of colors, let's say, in their feeling tone. And... It's a, it's a little like playing with a setting in Photoshop that just changes the general hue of the entire image, but then new colors are appearing everywhere uh, that you can't really predict what's going to happen. There, there might be some red in the sky in the photo that I sent, for example. You don't see when you're just looking at the clouds, but when you... When you turn up the red channel or you generally enhance the saturation you see where the, th that certain color is. And so that's what it feels like when, uh, when planets change signs and when several planets change signs, several things are changing at once. Um, and so it's a little psychedelic and there can be some synesthesia, some overlapping and crossing. Meanwhile, uh, Venus is done being retrograde and is about to form a conjunction to Juno so another asteroid is highlighted. We're talking about the first four uh, discovered from uh, 1801 through 1807. And this conjunction of um, Venus-Juno is making a big aspect to Jupiter-Albion, Albion formerly known as 1992 QB1. And so on the one hand, we have this kind of relationship that is... Uh, that, that is monogamous, that is defined by self, that is defined by uh, uh, attention to oneself, that's Leo, uh, self-esteem, that's also Leo, and it is at 90 degrees to Jupiter in Taurus, which has been dancing around 1992 QB1. That was the first planet that was ever discovered in our solar system beyond Pluto in 1992, 31 years ago, incredibly. I'm sure more so for the discoverers. And this led to the discovery of all of these planets out in the Kuiper Belt, including Eris. It starts the whole thing. Most astronomers didn't believe that they were there. So QB1 Albion can have the theme of 
they didn't believe it was there. Now it's conjunct Jupiter being magnified. It is very, very there. And one of the things that it does is it has a kind of deer medicine of uh, guiding you to the edge gently, guiding you into new experiences, new dimensions of consciousness uh, without this uh, kind of enforcement, enforcement of Saturn or this jolt of Uranus or uh, this uh, compelling uh, seductive death threat of Pluto. A QB1 Albion is a kind of come hither energy, come hither into your humanity. Uh, that's from Blake, a bit of what Albion stands for. Um, I, I personally have associated QB1 with the role of the thresholder. The thresholder being the person who guides people to the next stage of their evolution. There's a number of different kinds, but I think of people who are effective, gentle sex coaches as being uh, covered under the purview of QB1 Albion. And this is happening in Taurus, and one of the things being forgotten along with the body in digital is the fact that erotic feelings can exist offline. Your imagination and the sensation of your body exist offline. <clears throat> in fact, unless you're a really phenomenal artist, it's actually quite difficult to get them online. Uh, I was... Um, and sometimes it just happens. Uh, I happen to read the New York Post every day, not thoroughly, but I look at it because I go to the horoscope every day. So I'm checking uh, the Post quite a bit. <clears throat> and currently on, or at least last night on the cover, was a politician running for state Senate, basically, no, state assembly uh, in, uh, let's see what state that was in. Let's see what state that was in. Come on. Um, besides the article about sharks living in a lake in a golf course, Susanna Gibson bl blasts opponents for gutter politics after sex videos surface. Democratic Virginia House of Delegates candidate Susanna Gibson. Uh, basically had a chatterbait account with her husband and they liked to have sex online and they would get tips. <laughs> That's how chatterbait works. Now, I love her and them for, for doing this. It's also, in conventional political reality, unwise, but on the other hand, it leads to interesting initiations. Uh, so um, I found her email address and wrote to her and uh, and said, you know, don't don't sweat it. Nobody cares. <laughs> I sent twenty five dollars just purely out of love uh, to uh, back up my uh, my statement. Um, and I have I have no idea her politics, and I'm not really into Democrats. But um, anyway, so that's that. I don't know if that's a QB one. I mean that jolt of being put on the internet. But on the other hand, she broadcast herself with her husband. Now, uh, I, I dare say that part of the controversy is that they're heterosexual. <laughs> and this is, heterosexuality is the new deviance. Yes, it could be you. The heterosexuals are coming for you. All right, so um, a little more astrology, then I will get out of this. Uh, I'm, I don't usually do these kind of uh, entirely free-form, I'm not fully awake, rambling podcast. I'm not sure I've ever done one. I'm just trying this for fun. 
Uh, so today is the 13th, and then the next chart up is the 14th. Though so let's look at right now for example for for a uh, moment, and and then I'm uh, going to sign off. Command N. So right now, Libra rising, Mars rising here in New York. The Moon has entered Virgo. Uh, right at this moment, the Moon is conjunct Isis trans Pluto. That's the thing with the little. Um, fuchsia circle circle with the line through it like no swimming Baden verboten um, the sun is moving into an opposition with Neptune six degrees that's an opposition for the sun it's also at the midpoint of the Nessus Neptune conjunction in Pisces you can see that over in Pisces it's an down on the part of the chart where everything is uh, retrograde. But the, the the next thing, well, today, the moon is conjunct Mercury. That's in a few hours. Let's get, let's get a time signature on that. Aspects, moon, using the, the glorious, no longer available IO Sprite. Uh, at 6.04 p.m., so all day long, um, until like mid-afternoon in California, late at night in England, uh, God knows when in Australia, the moon is approaching a conjunction to Mercury retrograde. And so here is a special focusing of ability that that combines the intuitive ability of both Mercury retrograde and of the moon in one point. Uh, Sally Brompton, in her Pisces horoscope today, wrote, remember that this happens in the opposite sign for Pisces. Therefore, the relationship sign, and, and Sally wrote, there appears to be no rhyme or reason why a loved one is acting like a crazy person. So all you can do is keep your distance and let them get you let them get on with it. When they finally regain their senses, you can ask them what it was all about. <clears throat> Maybe this is why I think almost everyone is acting like a crazy person. All right, so then the next thing that happens is that um the the new moon happens and that's uh, that's the night of the 14th. 9.39.39 p.m. EDT on September 14. That's a Thursday. And uh, that, too, is opposite Neptune Nessus. There's, there's a lot of anxiety over subtle thoughts and feelings being picked up by all the Virgo serving as a kind of a a dream catcher for all the activity in Pisces. So it's sometimes hard to perceive what's going on in Pisces, but when when you when when there's Virgo there, it's like it's, it's almost like making a sandcastle because you can mix that water with something earthy and give the dream some form. I miss doing that. I've I've seen some elaborate sand castles done that in that drip method you know where you you mix the water and the sand in your hand and then you you uh you drip it like a either a stalactite or a stalagmite i'm not sure which one goes up okay so then then the next thing that happens is um about 18 hours later at 421.02 p.m edt new york time mercury stations direct now, most of the summer, um, we've been dealing with the approach to Venus retrograde, Venus retrograde, then Mercury retrograde, uh, then Venus station direct. Mercury remain and remains, as of this moment, retrograde. It's a lot of inner planet retrograde at the same time. There have been a lot of outer planet retrograde. So that's enough to have... Uh, to have a sensation of like, where am I and what am I doing here? That's always a good question. I'll leave you with that. A little bit of music of, of Vision Quest just chosen randomly from the Vision Quest 
live, it's not really live, it's kind of a time machine, but it's feeding off the Planet Waves computer down the basement. Not really the basement, second floor office. All right, till next time, till tomorrow. Thanks, good to be with you. Have an awesome day and bye for now. Thank you.